was not a back shooter. You had the front covered. Listen, if you're not gonna play fair, I'm gonna gobble your face up. Oh, no. Okay, children, it's time for the real world. Yeah, well, don't bother packing a lunch for me. I'm just gonna eat some of this kid's head. Oh, oh, <laughs> Sometimes I do not know which one of you is the eight-year-old. He is. <laughs> Come on, partner, the stagecoach is awaiting. The stagecoach needs a tune-up. No horsepower, huh? <laughs> I think you're a little young to go to college, son. Through the window, Dad. Through the window, pal. Here's your school report. Very good. Why would any kid who knows as much about the old West as you choose to write about the zoo? Let's teach him to open car doors first before we move on to the more difficult things. Okay. Give us a kiss and you got a deal. Okay, see you later, guys. Yeah. Don't take too much time oiling your guns, partner. Bye, Dad! I don't believe it. 
Every single day for an entire year. Scotty! Hey, Joe! <laughs> what do you say? Well, democracy is safe at any rate. Listen, so we can ride in to get it. Ride in? Oh, Scotty, you forgot about the auction. The auction? Is it 4.30 uh -huh. already? Well, why don't you guys go on ahead and I'll get my stuff and come right behind you? Well, look, look actually, Scott, I thought maybe we could go in together, then after the auction we could uh, meet up with Betty and a friend of hers, meet him for a drink. Gee, I can't tonight, Joe. I got term papers. Well, well look, uh, why don't you ride with me anyway, and uh, my driver will take you back in. Okay, let me just go in and get my coat. Kids in a candy store, huh? Let's see what I like. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, put up by uh, Texas John Cody. So it must be real. Absolutely. Oh, uh -huh, yeah, there comes a set. Sorted tin types, handbills, and other Western bric a brac. Mm, yeah, just, uh, just your kind of thing, huh, Scotty? My type of thing, too, you know. Sure would be a shame for us to bid it up between us. Hey, what do you say? I'll do the bidding, and if we get it, we'll split 50-50. We'll each take a trunk. All right. I'll take this one. Got yourself a deal, partner? Here's got a hold. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? We're going to start the auction very soon. Would you all be seated and be sure you have a bidding number? We cannot honor any bids without a bidding number. Thank you very much. Now, logically enough, we're going to start this auction with lot one. Lot one consists of a knife, but a special knife. This knife was made popular in the style of Jim Bowie. As you can see, it has a very large steel blade, probably used for skinning buffalo and many other nefarious purposes. However, a long time ago, someone took the time and trouble to repair the handle of this knife, replacing it with a piece of buffalo hide. In my mind, that deems it as authentic, so I'd like to have an opening bid, please, of $500. <laughs> to these parts? Man don't step down around here unless he's invited. Yes. I forgot. Yes, the smell of that coffee there has taken my manners. Okay. I'm obliged. I ain't familiar with that accent. You boys running your cattle down to Tucson? We don't have to run them that far anymore. Railroad's been here since 1880. Where might you be headed? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm looking for a man, a gunslinger, who wears a pair of 45s, like ebony handles, each with a silver star. Have you seen anyone like that? Are you the law? No, have you seen him? Seems to be a... No. Can't say as we have. You run out of coffee? What was his name? Who? <coughs> what was his name? The guns are all I remember. Ebony handles, silver stars, just like you said. It was back in. Crossfire. Crossfire was the name of the town. 
Unless you were either as fast as my bullet, I wouldn't try it. Eighty shaving implements sold number sixteen. Number sixteen. Now we move to lot twenty-seven. Lot twenty-seven consists of two trunks. One is leather and one is tin. Containing. Well, let's see what one contains. Well, we have some old tin types. Old tin types. Some old papers. Also a bottle of old red eye. Empty, I'm sorry to say. However, this does contain a lot of nostalgia, a lot of history in this, ladies and gentlemen. From over here, you see what appears to be a bullet hole. Now, can I get an opening bid, please? Of 20 <laughs> Black Ivory handed to the service car. I'm not the law. Of course you ain't. Law don't show up in this town. Not if they know it's good for them. We ain't seen nobody like that around here. Ebony and Silver Stars. Bit fancy for this town. Like these clothes you're wearing. Fancy. From back east, right? Yeah, I've ridden the waist. You're a liar. Ain't no more than a day's dust on him. How did you get here, mister? I, uh... Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> I took a train from Toussaint. You're a double liar. Ain't been no train through here in two days. We've seen your type before, mister. Easterners chasing an easy buck. Carpetbaggers. Bounty hunters. Now I wonder, which one of them is you? I, I ain't got no ebony and silver stars. Just plain wood. Five notches. You must be pretty good. I'm the best there is. I believe you. That's what your mouth says, mister. But your eyes say something different. Boys? like what it's done to the trunk, you just love the neat little hole it'll leave in your head. No, no. The paper wants this clear. I can't have all these people here. Well, now, listen, I'm the town mayor, too, and I have a perfect right to be involved in this. I bit. don't care who you are. You can be in the next one. You can all be in the next one, but I got to have a clear shot. Now, if you'll all just step aside, I'll get this done. About ready. Mr. Mayor, give me some room, would you? Back off, fellas. Now we're ready. One ninety. Who could have bid two hundred? And sold to Doctor 
Mackenzie, two hundred dollars. Thank you. Well, let's go divide the spoils, me son. <laughs> okay. Looking for a ganslinger. Plenty of men like that around here. Now three less, thanks to you. He wears a pair of 45s, black ebony handles with a silver star. Have you seen somebody like him? Silver stars? No, I ain't seen him. How about a military escort coming this way? <laughs> Through crossfire? No. You know, a river around here winding like a snake? I'd be your old rattler. A few miles away from here. Which direction is that? North. Say, this, uh, this guy with these silver stars, who is he? What's his name? That's what I'm here for, to find out. Well, say, if, you, if you're going to be traveling, maybe I can interest you in a pair of shoes or... I was expecting it. Thanks, Sergeant. Now that's uh, all you had in that uh, big trunk you bought? Hmm? No, there were some other things, some... Uh... Some leather and some skins and papers, but that's pretty much the best of it. Well, it looks like I finally got it over you, Scotty. I got the pick of that bag. Original Mexican pinwheel spurs, silver on brass, inscribed and stamped. <laughs> Original buckles, too. <laughs> well, now, why do you want these blown up anyway, huh, buddy? They look just... Just humor me, will you? Oh, well, fine, Scotty, fine, fine. Listen, afterwards, I'll show you my original Mexican spurs. Hey, could I wear them? Oh, well, they're antiques, Scott. Well, but then again, so are you. Well, you find what you're looking for. Can you isolate and bring up that guy in the background? Karen's got a sister. You remember Karen, the red hair I've been uh, dating. Got a sister, quite a looker, too. I thought maybe next Saturday night we could eh, double date. Thanks, Joe, but no thanks. Can we get a little light closer on the gun? Scotty, look, I know how hard it hit you. I really do know, but you gotta start picking up the pieces. How about focusing in just on the gun? Listen, Joe, I appreciate what you're trying to do for me, but really, I'm happy as I am. Oh, Just yeah. a close-up on the gun. Mm -hmm. Sure, happy. Look, Scott, when a hobby starts becoming a lifestyle, it's time to hit the old psychiatrist's couch. I think I've been had. It looks like a 357. It's exactly what it is. A 357 Magnum circa 1980. No. No, it can't be. No, that's impossible, Scotty. No, it isn't. Look at the bended barrel. You get the swing out cylinder. Well, maybe, but there's, there's no that. maybes about it. That's a 357 Magnum, a modern weapon. Can I have a copy of these pictures, please? There's something wrong here, Joe. I think I've been had. If you've been had, then what about my spurs?
the damn thing is clearly marked 1886, and I'd say that was just about right. There's no way you could have made a mistake. Scott, you asked him to be thorough, and I was. I gave it the whole works. Chemical tests, spectroscopy. This tin type is at least 100 years old, no doubt. What's the problem? Look at the gun in that fella's hand. Yes? Suppose I were to tell you that it was a 357 Magnum revolver made in 1980. Scott, you could tell me that was an ice cream cone and I wouldn't know the difference. What I do know is that this tin type is at least 100 years old. Philosophers and scientists for centuries, including Einstein, have given us data which indicates that time itself, one day, might be manipulated. Now, we've explored the possibility of an advancement in weaponry in 1886, remaining undetected and unexploited, but we've discounted that as an impossibility. I promised you that today would be a departure. I think the way I explained it was we would have a mystery in history. Now. We definitely had a mystery in history. Next time I give a history class, remind me not to do it in the physics building. <laughs> you all have those uh, folders in front of you that you've read containing my thesis. Are there any comments? Are there any questions? Should I interpret this as an awed silence? Okay, professor. You're joking, right? I mean, you got to be joking. <laughs> no. Time travel? <laughs> what is this, like April Fool's Day, just at late? <laughs> That's very funny, Frank. Are there any serious questions? Yeah, can you take me back to last Saturday night? Please don't. <laughs> you going somewhere, Mr. Stenman? Professor, with all due respect, the hour is up. It's hard enough getting through the paper itself. If we're now going to sit here and analyze it, I got other classes to worry about. I would have thought you'd been more receptive. Receptive to logic, Professor. All right, that's it for today. Today, Prof, or tomorrow? Or yesterday? Or last year? That's very funny. It's a shame they don't give credits in uh, cynicism. Perhaps I should have not. Who are you? My name is Georgia. Georgia Crawford. What can I do for you? I've come a long way to see you, Professor McKinsey. I've read your position paper. You and I are doing research along similar lines. Is that so? You gonna draw on me? Of course not. I'd like to see the actual tintype, please. What tintype? The one you have rejected for your class. 
Why do you want to see it? I am someone who shares your obsession with the Old West. I'm fascinated with your thesis. I need to use some of your research to balance my own. Professor McKinsey, I believe you. You're from the East, right? Sorry? I know a little bit about accents. You're from the East, right? Right. Yes, the East. You ran the usual tests? Mm-hmm. Spectroscopic, uh, particle delineation, fiber examination. Oh. That was a waste of time. I beg your pardon? Uh, well, the tintype's obviously authentic. Here, look at these shadows. What about them? Well, the contemporary camera always puts the flash next to the lens. But in those days, they held the flash pan this high, which would tend to foreshorten shadows. See? You didn't notice that? Of course I noticed that, Miss Crawford. I have those pictures memorized. The shadow is obviously foreshortened. Good. Then we're thought paralleled. You bet we are. Have you established where the photograph was taken? Not yet. Then that's the next step. Miss Crawford, you have any idea? How many towns across the Old West grew up and disappeared overnight? Yes, I do. But what can you tell me about this town from this photograph? Well, for one, it was well established because I had a photographer, which means I had a newspaper, which tells me this was not a whistle stop. Very impressive, Professor. It's a small wonder you were considered one of the world's great authorities. Were? Well, that's what they'll be saying, won't they? Now, these mountains won't have changed, so if we could line this photograph up with the actual mountains... Ridiculous. That would take months. Time is relative, Professor. You should know that. Do you have a room that I could change in? We might as well get started. Take your pick. Thanks. do what you're told. We gotta wash too, you know. What we gotta do is rob a stage. And we gotta be ready to do that when it gets here. Oh, Bart, that ain't due until... It's due when it gets here. Maybe they make up some time. Here you are, caught out in the open like a bunch of halfwits. Now get out of that crick.
River is affectionately known as Old Rattler, once an important watering place for recruited hideout for outlaw gangs. Why are we stopping? Because I'm tired. I've driven these roads dozens of times. I'm telling you, this is a waste of time. All right. Don't crank yourself up into a massive defense mode. I am not in a defense mode, whatever the hell that is. Okay, suppose we do find the right town. What's it gonna prove a hundred years after the fact? I can't believe that a fellow historian is questioning the validity of an objectively verifiable first step. Okay, what's the next town? Crossfire. Oh, yeah. They tried refurbishing that town a couple of years ago. I know the only thing you're gonna find there is an ex-tourist trap. We still have to check it. It won't take so long. I'll just turn on your music device. That's the ashtray. to be able to bring your whole family here. Professor, I think we got something. This is it. Crossfire! Put it there, partner. I don't know whether you're clever or just plain lucky. How about both? God, happened right there in 1886. Okay, uh, let's split up and uh, see what we can find. I'll take this part of town and you check out that end. Okay. I guess I should congratulate you on your deter... Where the devil did you spring from? I was just standing right here, mister. Well, you sure scared me. But you got some engine blood in you or something, you sure walk soft. Well, uh, I'm looking for a man. Oh, hell, everybody looking for somebody today. This ain't no damn information bureau. It's real important to me. He's, uh, he's about my size. He's, uh, got white hair and long coat. He's foreigner. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I seen him. He was here a while ago. Paper did something on him. I sure hope you were a friend of his. Where'd he go? I don't know. He asked me about old Rattler, and he just old took off. You know, the Riddler. Much obliged, mister.
before, Dad? Well, Sheriff, in the old days, when the bad guys went in the saloon to have a drink, see, this is where they hung their kids out to dry. <laughs> is that true, Mom? No. This is where little boys fall off and break their heads. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, sure. Uh, time for your what? Bath? Yes. Oh, Daddy, <laughs> save me! Save me, you're as ready as you're ever going to be. I'm living proof that you're not crazy, Professor McKinsey. I'm a flesh and blood human being with one interesting quirk. I was born 600 years from now. 600 years? I've come all the way from 2586. 2586? I'm one of your time travelers. One of my time travelers? How many of you are there? I need to understand all of this. In this skeptical century, I thought you were the one guy who could understand. Look, you were halfway there already. Look at your own thesis. Yes, there's a little naive. You, naive? Well, you're a beginner, but... Wait a minute. Professor, I came back through time to find you. 
Because I thought you could help me. Now I know you can. That's why I came back just now. What do you mean? Where you been? 1886. 1886? I took a horse ride from this spot down to the river. A hundred years ago, it was called the Old Rattler. And that's where I was. You're talking casually about traveling over a hundred years to a guy who gets totally confused during rush hour. Well, I didn't expect you not to be shocked, but I did expect you to get over it as soon as you can, because uh, I need your help. I need your mind, your books, and any scrap of information we can find about this town as soon as possible. <laughs> years from now isn't perfect, but we haven't had a war in over 80 years. Well, why are you here? To find Joseph Cole. And who's he? The man in your tintype. Oh, silly question. You've come back to find the man in my tintype. Now, why didn't I think of that? Dr. Joseph Cole, a brilliant, ambitious man and very, very dangerous. Cole is one of our most prominent scientists. He's a physicist, microbiologist. He's even got a degree in history like you. Well, why is he so dangerous? That peaceful world of mine? Well, it's a pretty tenuous and fragile thing. Irresponsible scientists brought us to the brink. So, in my world, scientists are monitored and restrained. And the architect of that restraint is my father, Matthew Crawford. He works out of Washington and Cole worked for and with him. Together, they made the greatest breakthrough since man split the atom, a machine to conquer time. That's when it all started. Listen to me, Cole. This device isn't ours. It and all of our research belong to the Federation. Now, we've just reinvented the wheel. Be proud of that. I am proud, Kravitz. That's the pride of ownership. Ownership is an antiquated concept. I'm coming! I got my blood into this! And now we have it, look! Right to the palm of my hand. Time! We can go back to the past and change it as we wish. Joseph, as your friend and colleague, I'm going to pretend I've never heard you say this. Then I say it again! You are my partner! You don't dictate what I do! Fifteen years on one project, not being able to proceed further. Maybe one day we would be allowed to do it. Not while I'm elected controller of this bureau. It's been this way for years, Cole, you know that. Since my father was here and his father. Yeah, and his father and his father and his father. I know that. I voted for you. I'm thinking of changing your decision, are you, Joseph? Change the thing. Congratulations, Doctor. We should have known then. Should have been alerted. Cole was not the kind of man to give up so easily. Yes, Mike. I just got a call from District 5, sir, about two blocks from Dr. Cole's residence. What's the problem? There's a power overload reading from that residence, sir. And it appears that the time crystal is missing. Are you positive? Yes, sir. Then please investigate immediately. And Michael, Cole is licensed to collect antique weapons. Be careful. Don't go alone. Yes, sir.
You stole the time crystal, didn't you? And those clothes. You were about to turn around. Sergeant. That was it. Cole escaped in time. Literally to 1886. So how did you get to me? Your thesis. The one you tried to deliver. No. Yes. It still exists. 600 years later, preserved by laser. You're kidding me. <laughs> no kidding. A dozen pages of considered argument on how it was possible for a man to be photographed holding a magnum pistol in 1886. Wow. It was too good a lead to pass up. Why you? Why not a cop? Cop? Police. Person. Investigator. My father and I developed the new time machine. We were the only ones that knew how to use it. He's a public figure, would be missed, and training somebody new was out of the question. So, here I am. Why would Cole go back to 1886? Exactly. Why? To change history. That's what I'm afraid of. Hey, Tex! You know, they haven't shot a Western movie around here in a long time, so I'd uh, take off the Wyatt Earp coat if I was you. Are you heading for the next village, mister? Village? <laughs> well, what the hell? Hop in. You know where I can find the small two-seated vehicle around here? There's lots of cars like that, mister. The one I'm looking for is white and black. The insignia says... Uh, insignia? You mean the, uh, the license plate? Yeah, the license plate. The license plate says FST draw. Yeah, sure, I, I know the car. What a pain that thing is to fix. Belongs to that uh, crazy professor at the university over on Central. Central, yeah? Yeah, Central. Thanks for the lift, mister. Presumably, Cole went to Crossfire for a reason. Whatever he has planned has something to do with Crossfire. That's right. Well, then why not go back again? If you're absolutely certain that it's I not... am certain. And in July of 1886, the date on your tintype. He didn't just pick that out of the stratosphere. He was prepared. He was dressed for it. Besides, the blacksmith verified he'd been in the area. Well, then? July is a whole month. Yes, I could go back and I could sit and wait around from July 1st to July 31st. And suppose I'm across town, whatever it happens, whatever it is. Or maybe I'm across the street. I have to pinpoint the exact date or I'll miss it. I got a friend who can help us. Texas John Cody. What he doesn't know about the West never happened. doing us both a favor and moving your vehicle before I have to give you a ticket. Sure, I'm sorry. Oh, I wonder if you could tell me the direction to the university. Yeah. Go down about two stoplights, make your first left, second stop sign, make a right, it's about a half a mile down the road. Can't miss it. Well, now we get to the good part. What do you think of this, Missy? This room bores your pants off of most women. <laughs> That's the risk I'll have to take. Ah, uh, what do you say, dude? You want to share a little spot of rye with me? 
Yes, no, thanks. Ah. All right. Neat, please. Yeah, neat, uh huh. Cheers. Quite bracing. <coughs> yes, it's bracing, uh huh? <coughs> Could I have another? Well, well, bird can't fly on one wing, can he? <laughs> <laughs> hey, why don't we, uh, why don't we go see if we can find something on Crossfire? Ah, yeah, Crossfire is <coughs> very good. Uh -huh. yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, step into the office here. Oof. See what we've got. Uh. Well, now, let's see here. Crossfire. No. No crossfire. How about, uh, old Rattler? Old Rattler. Ah. Might have got lucky. You know how many people could read and write in those days? Not many. If you could write your own name, likely they'd make it the judge. <laughs> they could sing, though. Yeah, and their songs were like their history books, you know. They passed them down from generation to generation. And I got the greatest collection of Western songs in the world. They're all, all on tape, cross-filed now. Yeah. Well. Looks like what I fed into that machine, we got two possibilities. It's not any help. There aren't any words. You noticed that, huh? <laughs> right, too, isn't she? Have to go <laughs> easy on it. Okay. I told you there were two possibilities, so we try the other one, huh? Keep your shirts on. Twas in 86 by the old rattler's curve That the star-handled stranger showed the blue boys his nerve When them gun-toting outlaws rode out of the west Up came that sweet stranger and showed them who's best He came out of nowhere in a flash he was gone Left them outlaws behind him, dead everyone They'd come out a-shootin' like bees from a hive But the star-handled stranger kept the blue boys alive Well, I can give you a tape and a transcript if it'll help. Yeah, that'd be great, John. Huh. Oh. Legends handed down. They're most likely distorted. Exaggerated over the years, but I've always found there's a grain of truth in it somehow. Does that help, Manny? I think it does. Thanks, John. Good. Good. Thank you, Yeah. Come back sometime with a uh, arm wrestle, huh? <laughs> if you can handle a defeat. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder where he found her. <laughs> Star-handled stranger. Why star-handled? Well, a handle in those days was a person's name. I don't know. Who are the blue boys he saved? Well, the army. Right, cavalry. That could be. What would they be doing there in 1886? Indian wars were long gone. Escort duty. Escorting what? A consignment of guns? Gold? People, a person. That'd be one heck of a person, though, to get the army to escort. Like who? The president. Who was president in 1886? Grover Cleveland. Good boy. I'm a history teacher. I went through documentation. There wasn't anything there. It would have had to have been a secret mission. 
get in. Possible? Very possible. We know that nothing lastingly harmful happened to the president during that year. So you think we're barking down the wrong tree? I don't know. You think Cole could have heard that song? Possible. Cody bequeathed his entire collection to the Smithsonian before he died. Sorry. Brodsky, Joe Brodsky. Texas John knows everything you need to know about the West, but Brodsky knows everything you need to know about the cavalry. Great. He's been collecting stuff about the Army for years. He's got letters, memorabilia, everything. Why don't we stop and call him? Yes, sir. I need everything you have on the cavalry. What's the big deal here, Scott? Especially during the summer of 1886, in and around Crossfire. I need this stuff fast, Joe, so pull out all the stops. What's this all about, Scotty? A girl. A girl? Well, why didn't you say, buddy? That's good news, you know. I've been telling you to loosen up and find yourself a nice, ordinary girl. Yeah, just call me Joe Cupid Brodsky. Well, she's a little old-fashioned, but, you know, you can't have everything. Listen, give me a call as soon as you find something, okay? Uh. Are you hungry? I was till we walked in here. You must know there are a thousand things I want to ask you about what it was like 600 years from now. The more time I spend around you, the less I think I know. Well, if you were around in my time, or even my great granddaddy's time, you would have heard of the Crawfords. My father, Matthew, was one of the innovators of the present socioeconomic system, and I think that... Hello? What if Cole came back to set off a chain of events that would eventually destroy the one man who stood in his way? My father. President Cleveland had a secret advisor, a mysterious man, behind every important decision, Matthew Crawford. Your father's namesake and ancestor. And he's on that stagecoach. Exactly. The president, that explains the escort, the secrecy, everything. And if Cole kills him. He hasn't any children yet, that would mean there'd be no more Crawfords. No father, no long family line. No me. Exactly. have to pinpoint that date.
Hi, I'm on the uh, stage between Tombstone and Dogwood. If you leave a message at the tone, I'll uh, get back to you. Scotty, calling you sooner than expected, huh? Well, I got lucky. Ran down what I think you're after. Cavalry around the crossfire area. Well, there's a mountain of material here and a Boku date, so you're going to have to tell me. We're ready for you, General Brodsky. Yeah, 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 hold your water, will you? Anyway, Scott, you made the usual copy. Uh, you want me to mail it, or will you collect? Sir, the senators are waiting. Uh, Scott, go. Son of a gun, zebra, Sam, eight, nine. That's the pickup eight. we're looking for.
That's a wonderful, educated guest, Lieutenant. Now, let me... You have some information about Crossfire? I'll give you 10 seconds to give it to me. Where is it? <laughs> Cupboard. left something for me. See if you can find it. Alert all sections. Repeat. Alert all sections. Gunfire on the base. Secure all exits. Alert all sections. Repeat. Alert all sections. Gunfire on the base. Secure all exits. Thank <laughs> you. 
Extract from the United States Cavalry Classified Memoir, dated July 1886. Ordered to escort President Cleveland to Tucson to attend a secret meeting with the Mexican Minister of War. Troops ran into trouble when outlaws attacked the stage near the Pomari River. Listen to this. Disaster was averted by the timely intervention of a stranger who used, with deadly accuracy, a pair of pistols marked with a silver star. Doesn't it give a specific date in July? Mm -mm. Later, the president commented that the fireworks he saw that day were better than those one week before in Washington. Wait a second. Washington fireworks in July. Independence Day. Gotta be. The fourth of July. And the attack took place one week later. Four plus seven is July, July 11th. 11. You think? It's all we've got. We've got to go back to July 11th, 1886. Professor, this isn't your fight. Cole's a killer. You might not ever come back. Lady, I gotta be perfectly honest with you. There's not much left here for me anymore, and there hasn't been for some time. I feel that my entire life has led up to this moment. I don't know if I'm ever gonna feel like this again. You've got to take me back to 1886. You can't deny me this. Place your hand on this. Here. What's it gonna feel like? It feels for a moment like you're everything in the universe, all at once. Look over there. My car. You left it in the 20th century. God, I hope I remember to turn the lights out. If you're right about the 11th, they didn't get here yet. The song said they rode out of the west. They'd hit him right there. It's a perfect place for an ambush. They'd come right out from under the sun. They could be out there right now, hiding. Let's, uh, let's get out of here. Hey, more quiet. Real quiet, him good. Sure they're coming? They're coming. What if there's no gold? They got a coach and an escort. What the hell you think they're protecting, sawdust? Cole could be here, too.
Where's the stranger? He's here. Save the day. And he turns a raid that was once successfully stopped into a full scale massacre. No, he hasn't. Professor! Professor! We can't let him win! Get down, Mr. President. Get down, Mr. President! I'll draw his flag. Offer! Please stay down, Mr. President. Major, if you please. Climb down, sir. Draw, Professor. After you, sir. Congratulations, Professor McKenzie. You made it in just in time. Are you all right, Mr. President? Well, I'll live out my term. Who was that man? I'd like to shake his hand. I don't know, sir. Major, go get him. He deserves a medal. Yes, sir. Major. Yes, sir. You better hold off a minute. Mm. You hurt bad, mister? No, I'm be all right. Thanks. You sure? 
Do I know you? Uh -uh. Where did you come from? We were just passing through. Thought we could lend a hand. Appreciate it. And thank you, too, stranger. My pleasure. You take care of yourself. You too. Beautiful, aren't they? Yes, they are. And you're going to take very good care of them, for both of us. You going back east, are you? Yeah, back east. Take me with you. <sighs> you're not of my time. It's against the rules. Then stay here. I'm not of your time either. I'm sorry. I can't. You understand? Yes. Yes, I suppose I do. Then why the long face, Professor? Sometimes... Sometimes in my life it seems like just when I get used to something, it goes away. I'm gonna miss you. I'm gonna miss you too. Do you promise me that if I ever need your help, I can come back and borrow you for a while? Of course. Hmm? What is it? I can't break the rules, but I sure can bend them. Very good. Why would any kid who knows as much about the Old West as you choose to write about the zoo? Let's teach him to open car doors first before we move on to the more difficult things. Okay. Give us a kiss and you got a deal. Yeah. Okay, see you later, guys. Yeah. Don't take too much time oiling your guns, partner. Bye, Dad! as if you knew. 